Well, we're moving on to skin cancer. And before we get to the heavy-duty skin cancers that we see, we see this also every other patient probably that comes in that is a you know fair skin, a blue-eyed background, or green eyes, red hair, uh, too much sun exposure, not enough sunscreen when we when we were kids, and you'll develop eventually, and this is decades later, these little rough, scaly little areas that are precancers called actinic keratoses. Actinic from the rays of the sun keratosis skin growth. A sun-induced skin growth because we put two and two together. Fair skin, lots of sun, grew up on a farm for example, you know, John was just telling me uh, earlier this morning who we were cutting a skin cancer out of. I says, I grew up in North Dakota, grew up on a farm, I wore a t-shirt part, part of the day and then I took my shirt off and it was in shorts all summer. You know, you riding a tractor or or going to the to, to the lake or whatever it is. And then decades later you have this chronic problem of these repeated actinic keratoses. This is what they could evolve into, squamous cell carcinoma. Now you can have squamous cell carcinoma of your of your lung, uh, of, of intestines, but squamous cell carcinoma can very often affect the skin. And you have this very hard, thickened, scaly nodule you see on the back of the hand over here. And what's most successful is Mohs micrographic surgery, and we'll talk about that with our basal cell skin cancer also, is a technique we offer in the office, and we've been offering for the past 11 years, which was new to our, our Highline community, which is a, a system which preserves the normal skin to the maximum degree. What we do is we make a little nick, so we have our orientation of where, where's north over here. We cut out two millimeters of tissue, process it in a lab we have in-house, so it doesn't have to go to Highland or Quest or, or downtown and, and wait for it to come back. It's all, everything is done in-house. We look at it under the microscope, make sure everything is clear, and either we proceed to take a little bit more tissue if there's a little bit of an extension, or it's clear, done. But it's something where we verify first that all the margins are clear before we sew it up and send the patient home. So it's not like seven days later you get a call back, oh, by the way, there was a little bit more. No, 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 no. We take what we do. We do in stages: stage one, two, or three, whatever it takes. There are about 45 minutes between stages, and we take less and less as we go on. So it could be just a little, little sliver, a couple of millimeters we take here, and then we're done. And then we sew it up, and then go home. You know, a week, two weeks, depending on what it is. Come back, take out the stitches, and we're done. We often do uh, full skin examinations. You'll see this at the bottom over here. This is the basal cell carcinoma. The nose is the most frequent area because it sticks out, and gets the most sun. Uh, for this uh, tumor, and it looks pearly. Pearly is the key here, and non-healing. And often here, you know, it bleeds, and I scratch it, and I try to put stuff on it, then it goes away, and then it bleeds again, and it scales up, and then it goes away. Heal, non-heal, heal, non-heal. It's like the classic sign for a basal cell carcinoma. And the best treatment here, again, is not just a straight excision, because you want to check the margins. You want to make sure the base and the periphery are all clear before you can send the patient home. So we offer this technique, and we, we keep slots open, and we do it on Tuesdays and Thursdays, morning or afternoon, here in the clinic every week. Here's one of the worst, and this is what we fear, and this one has gone on for a long, long time to get this big. It actually, um, it actually extends much farther than you actually see with the naked eye. We just call it a woods lamp, and then we trace this out. It's you know about this far out. A gentleman went, uh, you know came in to see us, and we had to take off his old cheek just because of that lesion. It has all these tentacles that go under the skin that you can't see, uh, which is a lentigo malignant type of melanoma. It's very superficial. It hovers on top of the skin instead of going invasive and then spreading with lymph nodes. So again, in a sense, that's fortunate. That, uh, that it just, we can take care of it surgically. There's actually a cream also called Aldara that has come out, A-L-D-A-R-A. -A -A. We use it for the actinic keratoses, we use it for warts, and what I'll do is I'll use it in addition to the surgery, I'll send them home with the prescription for the cream to wipe out any little cells that maybe our microscope could have missed. So again, a combination therapy between the Mohs surgery and the Aldara will be good for this type of lentigo malignant. But it's something we should all look for, the ABCDs. Something is asymmetric, one half. If you cut this in half, any way you cut it in half, if you cut it in half like this, one half doesn't look like the other. If you cut it in half like this, one half doesn't look like the other. This way, one half does not look like the other. If it's asymmetric, one half doesn't look like the other. If the borders are irregular, you can see the extension here. Here it's kind of a little bit smoother, but then here it gets a little bit irregular. The color, you see dark, you see brown, so you see a little area of regression. And then the diameter, more than a pencil head. 
more than the size of a pencil eraser, then you're not suspect for being a melanoma and you gotta come in and get it checked out. And then here's your classic malignant melanoma. And the sooner we see it, the more superficial it is, the potentially potential there is for cure. If we find a melanoma in situ and we cut it out, you're cured, done. But if it's at all invasive, the prognosis is proportional to how deep it is. The deeper, the worse it is. There was a 38-year-old uh, redhead young lady came in, and she tanning, tanning, tanning all her life. Um, she came in with a with a nodule like this, and it was more under her skin. It was felt that was a little bit of a depth to it, and uh, we biopsied it. And, you know, we took the little plug. It already was all black, and we didn't get even to the base of it. When she came back. She already had metastases that were trailing to her lymph nodes under her skin, you know. Right there, the prognosis is not good. Not good. I mean, a year or two. I mean, I sent her to the university and got her on a, a protocol, an experimental protocol, like right away. Cut and just off to the university, start an experimental regimen because it had already, already started to metastasize. And it, she admitted it was her own fault. She ignored coming in, did not want to come in and have a test. So as soon as he says something of this nature, have us take a look at it. We have uh, non-invasive ways with, for example, you see on the third bullet here, the dermoscopy. We have ways of looking through the skin. There are devices now with polarized light that has saved me doing a ton of biopsies. We can look at it with this device, the dermatoscope, and we can peer through the skin, analyzing a mole, seeing certain features that may not necessitate a biopsy. That'll tell us whether it's benign or not. So just have, come in, have it checked out, let us look at it.